Gosh, um, I think originally, because we, we have within Microsoft Education a programme called Partners in Learning, and we do a lot of work with teachers and schools um, sort of at the funky end of technology in schools. So there's a fantastic programme called Kodu and kids are doing really funky stuff. And I met and started talking to some of the people from CAS. And when you hear the data about um, the catastrophic drop-off in the number of, of students doing computer science at university, you think, uh, this is serious. This is going to have a really big impact, not just on uh, us, Microsoft, but on, on the UK as a whole. So I started um, finding out more about it, meeting the people, talking. And then what I realised is that, that my day job, which is working with the government, um, brings quite an interesting perspective to the whole CAS agenda. So I have good relationships with both of the departments that work um, in education, so both BIS and DfE have multiple sets of relationships and also with um, the membership associations and, and the organisations that are big in the education sector. So I, I buddied up with, um, with the people who were running CAS at the time and, um, and started a lobbying campaign and um, was sort of part of the team that trooped around Westminster and Whitehall, going in to see ministers and select committees and civil servants and influential people of all types, just trying to raise the profile of the issue and to get people to say, well, actually, this is something we're worried about, we've got to do something about. I think you're right. I think it, it's... Um, it's quite unusual in my experience to have a situation where there's a sort of a very broad grassroots consensus about the issues and what needs to be done. And lots and lots of different people with fantastic personal experiences and illustrations and initiatives. Nobody in the CAS world sits around and waits for things to change. Everybody just gets on and does their bit. And um, one of my favourite charities or, or social enterprises in the whole world is, is an organisation called We Are What We Do. And um, the, the essential philosophy of We Are What We Do is that if you wait around you know, for an enormous change of government policy and a big government shift, you, you, could, you could be waiting 10 or 15 years. But if everybody does something small, it adds up to something big and, and something will happen. And, um, and it's the way that you know, the, that particular charity has, has approached sustainability. So, you know, plastic bags and the way we all take our shopping home from Sainsbury's. But in fact, it's exactly the same philosophy that, that has fired the CAS group. Everybody that I've met in CAS has enough independence of mind and readiness to engage. I mean, a bias for action would be a, a nice way of describing it. And they're not afraid to sort of get out there and, and do something. And that gives everybody else courage. And, and so you, you start getting a momentum that, that I've, I've rarely seen. You know, there have been lots of very important issues, like you know, the number of women in computer science and all sorts of other equivalently important issues. But the, um, the momentum which CAS has generated is quite unusual. No, I agree. And, and I think um, one of the... I, I have to sort of confess, perhaps, I'm not a techie. So I, I, I didn't do computer science at university and I'm not on the techie side of Microsoft. Um, and so one of the things I feel quite strongly about all, all of the computer science and the CAS initiative is that this isn't something for the sort of the 5% at that end of the spectrum who are going to go off into deeply techie jobs in deeply techie companies. It's not just about that. It's about what are the core understandings that what is the core um, knowledge and, ex and, and approach that you, you need to have if you're living in the sort of digital world that we're living in at the moment. You want not to be a victim of the digital environment. You want to be able to manage your own presence in it and manage your life as a digital citizen. And I think there's, there's an amount, a modest amount of computer science understanding that you need um, to be able to navigate a, as a citizen of today. And I think that the, the whole question of computational thinking and problem solving, those things are of value right across the curriculum and in every subject. Then there's the, sort of the, the computer science understanding to be a good digital citizen. And then um, if everybody has all that grounding, there'll be some kids who will be fired up by it and will, will want a career. And they'll want to be entrepreneurs and they'll want to run startups and all kinds of things. 
with that focus. But it's not everybody. Everybody needs something. Some people need a lot. And if you look at Microsoft, we're a tiny company in the UK. We're only two and a half thousand people. But we have 30, 40,000 partner companies. And amongst our, our partner community, um, there are maybe half a million people employed. And there are, at the moment, 50,000 empty jobs. There are 50,000 jobs out there where we can't find the people with the right skills to take them up. And that's a, a, an absolutely tragic situation because we know that there are lots and lots of students coming through who would be brilliant in those roles if they were given the right opportunities and support along the way. So um, I'm, I'm thinking about this uh, in a, as an individual, as a member of the Microsoft education team, uh, as a member of, of the techie community, the, the, the business world in, in England, um, where if we don't sort out the pipeline, if we don't capture the talent which is here in the UK, and if we don't use it wisely and well, we're never going to remain competitive globally. Um, and I feel really strongly that you know, we can't afford to waste the talent that is here. Absolutely, and, and it's interesting because um, England isn't, or uh, Great Britain, UK, is not the only place where this is happening. And um, so I talk with colleagues of mine in, in other countries around the world who work in similar roles. And one of the, um, the experiences we've had in America, for example, is that uh, a programme of Microsoft ambassadors who are not teachers, and they don't pretend to be teachers, but they go out and make a commitment to buddy a teacher for half a term or a term to deliver a project or two projects or whatever it might be. And the, um, the evaluation of those types of partnerships is phenomenal. It's, um, it's really changing the level of engagement, the level of attainment, um, the mix of the gender balance in the, in the classes and the gender balance making choices for computer science as they go up the school. And um, I'm very, very certain, we have a, a lot of STEM ambassadors within Microsoft who are uh, experienced at going out into schools on, on science issues, but actually our core expertise is technology. And, um, and I think that there will be a, a very significant readiness um, to, to go out and buddy up with schools that we're all connected with. As I say, we're not huge and, and, and we tend to be located in three or four different parts of the country, but we can set examples and we can create resources which any ambassador could use when going into a school to buddy alongside a teacher. And I think those sorts of relationships, hopefully we can bring something to the party. We, we, we can never be teachers and we don't have that experience, but hopefully we, we can, as you say, scaffold or support the teaching which is going on in the classroom by bringing some real world experience and, and some techie expertise. Now I think that's right and um, I mean what I see in one particular area we, ha we have a group of teachers that we work with on a, a very regular basis. Um, it's the Partners in Learning Network and they have a YouTube channel and every time I open up the YouTube channel on my browser you know there, there is yet another magical movie where somebody who is um, a music technology teacher or a history teacher or a maths teacher or a something teacher has adopted technology and it might it might just be consumer technologies it might be something computer sciencey whole variety of different things but it can be acknowledged and adopted into um, the teaching and learning that they're doing with some astonishing results and and they're just magical moments and from my experience, um, one of the things that Microsoft's really good at is acknowledging when things go well. We love celebrating success. So I think the, the, one of the things that CAS has been brilliant at too is, is enabling people to share, creating situations like this conference, you know, where people can come together, can share, um, can, can encourage each other and, and can, can spread the word about a whole mass of different resources. So encouraging, sharing, building a community of the teachers is really important. And then celebrating the successes when things go right and when something wonderful happens. You know, making sure that we put it up in lights, tell the world about it, share it with other countries, tell everybody. Because actually that's, that sort of, um, that appreciation, I think, goes a long way to encourage people to do the next great thing.